Richard Sherman ready to go to work. You're listening to the opening moments from Super Bowl 49 in 2015. Today, as Hoskins gets ready to kick off. Super Bowl 49. It was a back and forth game, and the Patriots had come back from a 10 point deficit and were up by four points. And within the last 26 seconds of the game, the Seahawks were a couple yards away from the goal line, and it was their opportunity to get the touchdown, take the lead back, and win the Super Bowl. Baldwin sets up on the left. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. The Patriots went on to win that Super Bowl, but even more notable than that, the game went on to be the most highly viewed Super Bowl in history, with peak viewership being during that fourth quarter comeback at 120 million people. The stage is set, the curtain is drawn, and game number one opens This is a different championship from 2018 against China and Europe. The LPL and the EU LCS, you're going to see everyone... This championship was for the video game League of Legends. League of Legends is a strategy battle game not too different from chess in the sense that you have different characters with different skill sets, different moves, different strengths, all working together towards a common goal. China went on to win the game, making it their very first League of Legends championship win. The LPL has never won before, but that will change today. The crownless are finally king, and Invictus Gaming are your 2018 world champions. Peak viewership for that 2018 League of Legends championship was over 200 million. That is 80 million more than the most watched Super Bowl in history. I asked one of my students why anyone would ever want to watch a video game when they could just play a video game. I mean, a lot of people like watching sports. I think if it's similar like that, like, why do you watch sports if you can just play them? It's entertaining to watch people that are really good at them. And just, if it's something I enjoy, then I like to watch it. Like, uh, whatever I like. I like sports a lot. I watch sports games. I also like video games a lot, so I watch video games. The esports industry is growing, and it's kind of odd to say that it's not in the mainstream yet when it's pulling numbers that are almost double what mainstream programming is pulling. Not to mention the money that's going into the industry, into teams, into leagues. In an interview on the Freakonomics podcast, entrepreneur and Shark Tank star, as well as Dallas Mavericks owner, Mark Cuban was asked if he would buy or sell NFL stock versus esports stock. And he said, I take esports, yeah. Buy esports, sell NFL. Because once you play, you understand the nuances of the game, and it's aspirational and educational. So if you like to play League of Legends, it's hard. But one of the ways to get better is to watch other people play and to learn the nuances and to learn the strategies, particularly given that they change the rules every 90 or 120 days. And so the esports teams have got to practice hours and hours and hours a day. So it takes a real skill. It's a real sport. There's no physical hurdles. You can be four foot one or seven foot one. And if you've got the hand eye coordination and the, the brain processing speed and, you know, anything's possible, you could do it too. There are talks that esports could even be part of the Olympic Games as early as 2024. And so with such a booming industry on the rise, what role does esports play? in the world of education. I'm Tom Gibson, and you're listening to Stories from the Classroom. And today we're looking at esports in education. We'll be looking at the esports industry as a whole, as well as reasons why colleges and high schools and some middle schools are beginning to embrace esports in their communities. I'll be speaking with some educators that are working at the district level and implementing esports programs in high schools, as well as someone from the University of California, Irvine, which was the first university to develop a robust esports program. And I'll be talking to some folks from the North American Scholastic Esports Federation in regards to the resources that they're developing to help educators begin to implement esports programs into their schools. Additionally, I did my own esports project with a group of interested students at my own school, and you'll hear a little bit on how that went. But esports is an exciting new world, and gaming has always been something that I love to do as a kid, particularly with my friends. And to have the opportunity to learn how to actually implement it in a meaningful way in the education space and prepare students for the opportunity to be a part of this booming industry, it's exciting. So whether you've never played video games or you consider yourself a gamer, stick around and find out how esports is entering the world of education.
Hey, that was a clip from an episode of my podcast, Stories from the Classroom. If you'd like to listen to the rest of that episode, I've gone ahead and linked to it in Apple Podcast and Spotify and Stitcher and wherever podcasts are available in the description. Or you can just search Stories from the Classroom and find it that way. If you end up liking the episode and you want to support the podcast, subscribing to it and leaving a comment and rating in Stitcher or Apple Podcasts can really help other people find the podcast as it gets more and more positive feedback from listeners like you. So thanks so much for checking it out. I hope you do enjoy the rest of the episode and hopefully I will see you in the next episode of Stories from the Classroom.